who are able to look at this later, and it'll be put on the Canyon Zoo website uh, afterwards. So along with that, just remember our professional development norms as we go through today. Um, you know, we're committed, responsible, and respectful as you go through and being safe. So do what you need to do. You can uh, leave your camera on if you'd like. You can leave it off if you'd like. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can always uh, type them in the chat there. Or um, when we give you a minute, you can unmute yourself and go ahead and talk um, as well. All right, so remember everything we do ties back to the um, the framework and the systems of support and Apple testing and the data that comes from it is a, an important integral part of all of that. So I'm going to turn the time over to Michelle and we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. Um, so let's go through the learning intention and success criteria. So the learning intention is I am becoming familiar with the Apple test and the resources um, for teachers. And the success criteria is I'll know I've learned it when I can access the actual and the Apple website. I can embed practices into daily instruction and I can practice the test with my students. So let's go ahead and start. This is the agenda for today. So what does Apple stand for? What is it? Why do we assess uh, the partner target language? Why did we choose the Apple measure as our common formative assessment? When we will the Apple test be administered? Who will participate in the Apple testing? Who takes which test? Who sees the results? And uh, finally, the Apple website. So let's go ahead and start. So what does the Apple stand for and what is it? So APPLE stands for Actful Assessment of Performance Towards Proficiency in Languages. And the APPLE test that your students are going to take is a performance assessment of standard-based language learning across the different modes of communication. And we're going to review what are the modes of communication. And uh, all that is done through listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So. Let's review first what is proficiency. So the proficiency for world language is what students can do with the language in terms of listening, speaking, reading, and writing. It is in a real world, uh, real world uh, situation. It is a spontaneous and it is a non-rehearsed context. So it is what students can do with the language. Our Apple test that the students are going to take is a performance test that is geared towards proficiency. Its performance is so a test that is more structured, it's guided, it's modeled, and uh, it has, it's contextualized and your first opportunity to use the language. Your proficiency is what is spontaneous, it's unsupported production of the language across multiple real life situations. And just below the proficiency, you have the proficiency scale of Act 4. We're going also to review that very fast um, in a few minutes. So your Apple is a performance versus your proficiency, but Apple is a performance test towards proficiency. So Act 4 defines the performance as the ability to use the language at, um, that has been learned and practiced in the instructional setting. It is um, coached by an instructor, whether it is a classroom or online. It's guided by the instructional material. The performance refers to the language ability that has been practiced, and it is within familiar context and content area that the student is learning at that time. Proficiency is the ability to use the language, therefore, that we've seen in real-world situation. It is spontaneous interaction, non-rehearsed context and uh, it in a manner that is acceptable and appropriate to native speaker of the language. So that is your difference between your performance and your proficiency and all that has been taken from Act 4. The standards and Apple, the Apple test was based, is based on the world language standards that has been, um, that came out with Act 4. So you have your five C's communities, culture, connection, comparison. And at the heart of all of those standards, naturally, is your communication. You have your three modes of communication, the interpretive, the presentational, the, uh, and the interpersonal. 
And finally, you have your skills, reading, listening, speaking, writing, listening to speak, reading to speak, and uh, listening to write, and actually you have more than those skills. So the, uh, the APOL test uh, use all of those um, ACTPOL standards. And uh, the curriculum maps are also using all those standards. Just so they are based on the same things. Just, just a review for the three modes of communication that we've seen in the um, standards. So you have the three modes, the interpretive, the interpersonal, and the presentational. The interpretive is the one-way receptive communication. So the student is going to listen, read, and view the information, and so he's gonna get information that way. Um, the interpersonal is once the students will have gathered um, the, um, the information during the interpretive skills, then he's going to use that in, in order to have an exchange with, with a partner within a group. So the interpersonal is person to person is using the information that the students um, um, mastered in the interpretive. And finally, the presentational mode of communication. If you look at the arrows in the, uh, in the bottom, you have the presentational being a summative because all, all, the, all, that the, all the information that the students have um, learned during the interpretive and the exchange and the interpersonal, then they're gonna use that to do a presentation. Note that the presentational mode of communication is only a one way. It's a drafted, edited, productive communication, and you do that as a speaking or a writing. It's a speech, it's writing an essay, um, but it is not, I am not asking a question when I do a presentation, or presentational meaning I present. So those three modes of communication can be found, will be found, are in the Apple test. Why do we evaluate the target language? We evaluate the target language because we need to see where are our students um, based on their um, proficiency target for the end of the year. So if you are teaching the immersion class, your chart is on the um, left. And so just follow where is your grade and read across for your proficiency level. If you are teaching world language classes, look at the blue chart and uh, see what um, uh, level corresponded to your, um, to your class. So again, we evaluate in order to see if our students have reached the end of the target level for that um, level. So Act 4, and uh, when, you're gonna, when you look at Act 4, Act 4 uses the novice, intermediate, and advanced level. The novice and the intermediate level are divided in low, mid, and high. And uh, when you look at the Apple measure, when your students are uh, receiving some score on the Apple test, they're receiving some N1, N2, N3. N stands for novice, I stands for intermediate. Note that the novice level is divided in four. So you have N1 who is novice low, N2 novice mid, N3 who is also novice mid, and N4 who is novice high. Look that your intermediate is divided in five sections. So it goes all the way from I1 all the way to I5. And that the mid range is a lot wider because remember that as you go up in the proficiency scale, basically your, um, your proficiency works like a V shape and uh, as you go up, the more and more you have to learn and the more you have to use. So please keep that in mind. Um, the form that you have on your right the A form is goes from the novice level, we test novice all the way to intermediate uh, mid, and the form B will uh, start at the novice high and will go all the way to the advanced level. That is why depending on what test the students who are, uh, are testing, then you'll know you how, how high they can perform. But again, the Apple test is not, I pass the test, it is not, it is only about where is the students on that scale of proficiency. So based on what the students can produce with the language, it will be um, rated according to where is he in that scale of, pro or is she in that scale of proficiency. Um, as a part of the Apple, you, your students will also receive a student's score report. So once they have a score, they're gonna ha receive, every student will receive their, the, those two pages. The teachers have access to that. 
And uh, the dot on your right, the red dot, uh, will show you where is the students at that time when he did the test. So is, uh, the, the report is going to give them a description of their score. And then on the strategy colon, it will give them some strategy on how they can improve and go up to the next level. So make sure that your students read that. Print them for your students when you once you have their score and just g distribute to them and make them read, um, have them read so they can improve. Um, I've had in the past a lot of um, question about is Apple a predictor of the AP, passing the AP test, and um, it is not an indicator. Um, there's no real connection between the Apple and the AP. The world language AP test does not align with the Act 4 standards. It uses a lot of those um, interpersonal modes of communication, it's authentic text. However, it's presented in a way that is not, um, it's more demanding that's your, than your Apple test. Um, for example, the part one on your AP test is um, uses authentic material and the range is really um, towards the intermediate mid range and uses real articles and videos. So it's a little bit more demanding than your Apple test. And again, the Apple test is not an indicator of how the students will perform on the, on the AP test. Just so, so we understand. So why do we assess the target language? Well, students achieving language proficiency will prefer, will help them prepare for to be college and career ready in a global society and marketplace. And it's also a way to monitor our students' progress towards a grade level proficiency target. Again, the SPR is a document that you've seen just before that you can print for your students once you have received their score. So it's, it's a good way for the students and for the teacher to know why, um, where they are. Um, why did we choose the Apple measure as our common formative assessment? The Apple test is aligned to the national standards from Act 4. Utah World language standards are also align to the Act 4 proficiency standards, and USBE has identified the Apple test as the most sensitive tool for measuring students' language proficiency levels. So when will the Apple test be administered? So if you are in a dual language immersion, your test uh, will start, as a matter of fact, is, is coming up mid-October to mid-December every year. So this is for the immersion um, students. If you are using the Apple test for the seal of ballet literacy, you will take your test um, starting uh, the beginning of March all the way through mid-March every year. And if you are using the Apple test for the world language classes, your test will be administered between the uh, mid to the end of April every year. So according to um, what uh, to where you belong to, then you take the test at a different time of the year. Who is going to participate in the Apple testing? DLI students who are um, in grade three through nine will take the Apple test. Um, for the seal of ballet literacy is going to be juniors and seniors who are naturally in high school only. And for world language students, it is students in middle school and in high school who are in level two and level three of Chinese, German, French, and Spanish. Who takes which test? If you are in DLI, make sure that you refer to the DLI assessment schedule um, that your language um, director should have sent you, or please just ask if you, um, if you need, if, you don't, if you're not sure. Uh, but Cindy Perry will send you all that if needed. The, for the seal of ballet literacy, students are go only going to use the form B. Remember that the form B will test from the novice high all the way to the advanced level. And the students will test all section for the seal of ballet literacy. If you are um, testing for world language, then you will only use the form A. Again, the world language is level two and level three for the language of Chinese, German, French, and Spanish. 
and you're only going to test the interpretive listening and speaking and the presentational writing. And each one of those sections have multiple prompts, just so um, you are aware of. So who see the results? Um, teachers uh, have direct access to their student's score with LTI. You're just going to have to use the login that you have created. And if you don't remember, please ask Cindy Perry in the assessment department. She will be um, the one to help you with this. But this is, what the, the, this is a login screen in order for you to have access to your student's score. Um, the test procedure, you will therefore receive all your student's login information from Cindy Perry in the assessment, as well as the instruction for administering the Apple test. And um, remember that it doesn't matter if you are immersion or if you test for Apple for the seal of literacy or even for the world language, all the information will come from Cindy Perry. Um, and please make sure that all the makeup session that you're going to include are within your testing window. And uh, to know the precise date, naturally, you will be informed in advance. Um, a tip from an Apple reader. So I talked with an Apple reader, and uh, she said to me that the reader starts by reading the intermediate responses first. And if the student sample meets the level of the um, intermediate level, then the reader won't even uh, read the novice prompt. So it's a good tip to see. So the takeaway that she told me to um, make sure that everybody understands is that while students typically receive a prompt that start, of course, from the novice level to the more intermediate advanced level, they should spend more time on the intermediate prompt rather than just give an intermediate quality to the novice prompt. So basically, the prompt might seem like it's the same question over and over, but make sure that your students really pay attention to the prompt because sometimes they're only adding a few words or a few uh, descriptive um, into that prompt that, that makes the prompt go up in level. So make sure that your students understand that the prompt goes up in difficulty. So they have to show that, um, that progression when they answer. So now we going to look at uh, the act for uh, website and uh, the act for website uh, you have them all um, right here and uh, so let's look at the topic you can click on the topic and the topic this is what they are for that they always been basically they correspond to your level one level two level three if your world language or they correspond to your intermediate novice um, level um, so just please read it. This is general, but basically it is what the students are learning in, in, in the class. It is familiar topic about everyday, about everyday, um, everyday, everyday life topics. So it is not something that they have not seen. An important thing to do is to do a demo. Make sure that you practice with your students. So click on the demo that you, I mean, you just have to click here, choose your language, choose the form, remember, that you will be testing or the form A or the form B. The form B is for the more advanced, the form A it's for the uh, novice to um, mid intermediate. So just click on the correct form and on the correct language and go ahead and practice with your students. Just one note, when you do the writing sample, know that your students can actually um, click on the, on the tab for the writing and they, c they have access to all the accent or Spanish, French, German, all the accents are, are there. So make sure that they use that, uh, that new tool. And uh, you even have a section on the Apple that uh, shows you how to, um, to take the test. So please watch it for your, with your students and see how you can better use it. So all of that is on under your language testing website that, that you have. And on your left, you can just click on any of those and just practice with your students. But please practice before the test. Don't have your students just take the test without having practiced. And even for you. So in order to access your students' response, again, you can access your students' response 
You can l listen to their, um, to their speaking and you can read their writing. Um, the interpretive reading and listening section are computer scored. The interpersonal listening, speaking, and the presentation or writing are, rater, are rated by an Apple rater. Not ours. And uh, so, what should you do if you do not agree with the score? You can ask for a rescoring, it is totally free. In order to do that, please make sure that you inform Cindy uh, Perry that you would like to do a rescoring, and please include your name, your school, the student's name, and the student ID. But you inform Cindy Perry, but uh, you need to send an email to customercare at languagetesting.com. It is them who are going to be the one to do the rescoring. In that email that you write to LTI, please include your student's full name, the, t the type of the test, the language, and the test date, and a brief summary of why you are requesting the rescoring of the test. And uh, they said that you have uh, the rescoring can take up to two weeks for you to receive the results. So here we are. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat, um, or you're welcome to unmute yourself if you'd like to. Uh, but thank you for attending. I'll give you some think time if you have any questions. Remember that you can get uh, relicensure credit for attending today. I'll put the links in the chat here in just a minute. Um, and then this video will be posted online on Canyons U after today. So um, it looks like no one has any other questions. So um, I will go ahead and kind of let all of you go. But thank you so much for being here. Um, and hopefully you had uh, a great experience and check Canyons online for the rest of that information. See you later.